Hello everybody, welcome to the United Way. This is our five things uh, we learned. Aston Villa 0, Manchester United 0. Guys, we have to, I mean, digest this game. This is a better time to talk about it. But before we start, guys, I have a question for you guys. Does Eric Ten Hag deserve to be sacked in this transfer window? Put your comment below and explain why. And guys, the second I need to ask for you guys is to please share these videos to everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah start by clicking the like and share it because i would love to hear your fun don't talk behind the back drop your comments below i would love to hear that but let's start with the news about Herrick ten Hag. he has not been sacked yet i know there was a massive uh, campaign from the media and most of you the fans who think Herrick ten Hag deserve the fans who uh, deserve the sack which i will not refuse if you i mean i won't disagree with you guys because of the result but the question is, we should stop crying on problems and looking on solution. What is your solution in this uh, in the regards? Yes, he is sacked and so on. Also, I want to add up that some there was a lot of stories yesterday. I got even a guy, a, a British guy, saying he doesn't he wants his seventy million pounds. Look, Eric Ten Hag. For those of you who don't know, it's from a very wealthy background. His father, I think, the last time I looked at it, is closing on to be a billionaire already. They have a family wealth which is massive. In the real estate industry so uh, you looking at eric tenak as someone who is out there for the money you're making a big mistake and also he is a manager who who easily get a job like in germany in italy he's a tactician he's a disciplinarian he's someone who has a, a strategy but due to the way united has been run all this while it is so difficult for a neutral person to come and impose himself if i'm making sense so eric tenak should he be sacked it's up to you i want to know your question let's move to the second issue here about uh, the game which i will talk about this this is something which is good uh good news uh, the man of the match for me which i think was johnny evans i think most of the outlet agree with me on this one and guys please make sure you subscribe because we will be doing our reactions like that those will be live after every game uh, because it's important for you to react on the moment sometimes you get all these intrigues you get all this and we get emotional so quickly but reaction after games also are kind of original you know I think Johnny Evans, someone who is starting 39 years old now, being the man of the match, it is a good thing for him as an individual, but it's a bad thing for the club that, you know, a player who had who was not in the plans of Manchester United, a player who was just given a renewal contract to play lower end games, is the only one stepping up in a top game. I mean, I think that's wrong. I think that's not, uh, it's just hard to compre comprehend, you know. So, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, we've learned that We'll have to go back to the basics. These are just what I've learned with the game. Because if you have someone like Harry Maguire, which is the next thing I want to say, I want to talk about, and Johnny Evans being your main players, um, then your your club is in trouble. Because Harry Maguire is closing on on 28, 20, I mean 29, 30 soon. I think 30 soon, Harry Maguire, if I'm not sure. Someone should help me there. But if you're counting on these players for being the future of Manchester football team, while we do have younger players where we have signed, then we are in the massive problem, man. We are really, we really are. So tell me what you think below about this because uh, it's not quite encouraging for me. And uh, the only good thing about the issue with Ari Magui, which has just, he has just had a, a, um, a sustained an injury, is we are going through international, which means he will not be called to the national team. And um, yeah, uh, he might come, he might return. We'll get uh, information about that. He might return to the next game. When we get information, we'll inform you guys. But another very shocking thing I didn't really like is um, it's uh, about this player, to be honest, Ericsson. Not in a bad way. Ericsson was one of those players that most of us, most of you guys, you wanted him to be sold this summer. Football is a, is, is a funny old game, guys. I keep telling you about you, you guys that you guys are crazy about sacking the manager. And this manager can bring us another trophy this year. Maybe we are spoiled. Maybe we are dreaming. Maybe we think we are the club we used to be under, say, Alex. But this is not the case. We need to put our legs on the ground and try to be realistic. Yes, we are ending the table. We are what? I think 13, I mean 14 on the table, if I'm not mistaken. But the season has just gone with eight games. We do, sometimes the statistics which we read, he plays against us as a team. And uh, the undecisiveness of our board also has played some role. You cannot throw this on one person. I don't think Eric Tenak told Bruno Fernandez to that they'll kick the I mean kick that free kick so he should hit the bar. Because if you are being sold by the mainstream media, then you're in big trouble going forward. Nobody will satisfy you. 
I think Ericsson has done has uh, mm. has done a very good job. In my view, I will use Ericsson more as a ten with Bruno. I mean, when you have to get 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 more Bruno out Ericsson because Ericsson is very unselfish, he's more creative, he has a good vision, and he can he distributes properly well. I think Bruno, who I will go as the next uh, person I want to talk on this game about this game, which I think was a minus Bruno Fernandez. I think Bruno has been has has underperformed for the past four or five games. Tell me, guys. I would like to hear your comment. Tell me what you think about Bruno's performance because personally, I think Bruno has really underperformed. Because when you look at Bruno Fernandez, this is Mister Everywhere, Mister no, uh, Energetic. This is Mister Mister One Hundred Percent Mister Involvement. But he's he is not a specialist in anything. Like you can say Mister Per Free Kick. But what my point I'm trying to say is that Bruno Fernandez main job as a playmaker is to help people to develop games to help to develop strategies to move forward but this is not what we are seeing this is not what we are seeing it is very unacceptable to have a captain who is not performing Roy King could confirm that to you guys so I am so disappointed with Bruno Fernandez I'm not disappointed of Bruno's free kick by the way because it can happen to anyone just like penalty kicks it can happen to anyone but what i don't like is that bruno has been i basically did a video guys if you some years some months ago before this season that for for manchester united to play the football that most of you want we need bruno out rashford out they have too much influence on the game these are players that even when they are not in good shape you have to you have you can change them even if you want to use them on a tactical base they make their jumps on you especially players like rashford and most of you are all over the place about Manchester City playing good football. So how do we get there? That is an issue. So what did we learn again? Uh, that uh, our mid that there is some positivity about our midfielder. I think honestly we can't say this. Uh, we can't just say it is only uh, Aston Villa because that's how we we beat Chelsea. We beat Chelsea in the finals last uh, season. It was only che I mean we beat uh, how do you call him? It's Man City. It was only Manchester City. They were not in top gear. I mean, there is nothing, there is an impression and there is nothing that can get people back on Manchester United as a football club. Maybe our brand is too big or too cold or too hot to handle, let me put it this way, because if anything that United does is never appreciated by the public, then we are in big trouble. Some people just want the world to explode. And if you need, if you're one of those, then I think you should better and go and support another club because... I don't think a proper Manchester United fan will be super negative and not finding the positives. But there are some positives, and the, some of the biggest positives I have seen so far uh, has been you, Ericsson. I said some came out and said some said uh, it's because Manchester United um, uh, Aston Villa played on Wednesday, the biggest game of the season. You see where the, main, the, the the mainstream media is taking your mind to. That's why they could not stand. They did not stand up the pressure, but Manchester played on Thursday and could stand the pressure. So it's what. What do we. What do we say about this? So I, I just think that, uh, concluding this short video, as I want to tell you guys, is my view because I love to do these videos. I want these videos to be less than ten minutes. I want to conclude about the game yesterday. That the fact that we are playing against a champions team, a world real team. Which uh, the media has pumped about United would take us for that Aston Villa would take us for a ride, and we're coming out without conceding a goal. That is tactically spot on. Ten Hag needs to take that. That's why I gave him a six six point five more than average. The fact that we cannot score goals, we have we are I think we are on the seventeenth in terms of goal scoring. We have scored how many? Four goals in seven games in the Premier League. It it, it talks a lot on the players as well, but we have created more chances. So guys, tell me what you think below. Firstly, I want to know, do you want Eric Ten Hag? Does Eric Ten Hag deserve to be sacked? Two games, haven't lost any, but also haven't won, won any. And uh, if he should stay, if you want him to stay, what should he improve on? Don't just tell me that he has to put Rashford on the pitch. What? How do we improve? Because I can tell you that Joshua Zeski, unfortunately, I'm not going in on the young kid, but he hasn't proven the moral strength. I said yesterday, guys, that Joshua Zeski might easily become the new next Van de Beek. Why do I say that? Because playing for a big club, you need to have a very powerful will of mind. Joshua Zeski is a player that needs to impose his character. A good example was when Maradona was coaching, 
Messi doing the World Cup in Russia, he said Messi will win the World Cup with Manchester with, with, with Argentina only when he puts his character in the game. He has to have a, a, a personality on the pitch. And when Messi did that in Dubai, Argentina won. Those things matter. So guys, smash a like on the video, get involved with the United Way, share it because we have been shadow bound. It is clear. <laughs> I don't see any reason why we aren't getting the views. So uh, yeah. So with that said, and uh, yeah, talk to you soon. We'll be talking a lot tomorrow. I'll expand on Ten Hag, of the uh, situation financially and also personally. I'll also expand on, um, I will upload the video. I promise telling you guys, you guys should see how shopping at Old Trafford is in the future. So get involved and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.